Good afternoon. <clears throat> Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. This is the Oklahoma City Board of Appeals. Um, may we have a roll call, please? Here. So next on the agenda is a motion to elect the board chair. We have any motions? Um, I nom nominate Kyle Lombardo. Second. So I have a motion and a second. You want to call a vote? Aye. 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 Next order of business is um, <clears throat> the vote for the vice chair. Do I have a motion? Uh, I nominate Tommy. Will. I have a motion. May I have a second? Second. You want to take the vote? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. <clears throat> the next order of business is the approval of the bylaws. Um, I assume everybody received a copy of the bylaws in their packets and has had a chance to review them? Yeah, I would like to make a, a motion on this. Several years ago, we had talked about uh, looking at the bylaws and maybe uh, coming up with some different um, uh, terminology on some of the items. And <clears throat> so if, it's, if it pleases the board, I'd like to see if we can maybe have a committee of uh, maybe three of us on the, on the board who who uh, get together, everybody else can write comments after they've reviewed the bylaws and then we can report back to the uh, to you, Scott, and everybody on what we've come up with with some of the items on there that, uh, that have been a concern to some of us for a while. So I would like to say that we don't vote on it uh, this, this meeting and uh, postpone it till a future meeting. So I have a motion to table. Well, uh, I thought we'd take the two separate. So motion to table till the, either the next meeting or whatever meeting <clears throat> we think is appropriate after the committee gets done looking at it. So do you want to take a vote? Or do we need a second? I'll second. Ron made the motion, yeah. the table. Take a vote. Aye. 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 So there was a motion to create a committee? Uh, subcommittee, yeah, for us to. Do we have to do that by motion and then second, or can we just. Uh, <laughs> I think they'll say that <clears throat> it's the chair's responsibility to form the committee. So I can either do that now or postpone. So <clears throat> uh, since there will be no motion and no second, um, I'll take it upon myself to get with you, Scott, and we'll form the committee. So the next order of business is item five, approval of the minutes from August 9th, 2023. Uh, I assume everybody has seen the minutes and had a chance to review them. Do we have any questions? Oh. 
I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll second. So we have uh, Ron and Tom. Tommy. Ready for a vote? Aye. Yes. Aye. So the next order of business is the approval, or let's see, the, um, sorry, new cases. <clears throat> Our first case is case number BOAB 2024-00001, uh, an appeal of Melanie Compton, Reese Associates, from a decision of the code official for noncompliance with chapter 11, section 1107.5.3, of the International Building Code 2015 is adopted by the City of Oklahoma City <clears throat> pertaining to the requirement for accessible showers and sleeping units for 4300 West Memorial Road. Scott, you want to read the uh, staff review? Uh, the staff analysis is this. Uh, uh, let's see, this involves the property at Mercy's Women's Center up on Memorial Road. Uh, they're seeking a variance from the language of the 2015 IBC and the ICC ANSI 2009 as adopted by Oklahoma City, which relates to the requirement for, requirement for the accessible shower seats within an I-2 hospital sleeping unit. Uh, the 2015 IBC requires that I-2 hospitals must provide a minimum of 10% of their sleeping units uh, as constructed as accessible type units under the ANSI. Uh, the ICC ANSI for accessible type units uh, requires that at least one bathing room with each of these units complies with section 608. And uh, this section in particular lists the detailed requirements to the layout and arrangements of such items as grab bars, entry path, seating uh, within either the transfer or roll-in type shower compartment. Uh, the applicant wishes to conduct, construct a roll-in type shower compartment and does not wish to comply with the requirement to add either the folding seat required for a stand-in roller shower, nor the permanent seat required for the uh, alternate roll-in shower, as described by the ICC ANSI. Um, of course, figures are attached. Uh, in addition, the applicant has provided alternate plan proposals presenting the option of a transfer size shower compartment, uh, but still uh, shown without the similar seating as required under ANSI. Uh, Yep, the city has determined that the proposed plan layout shown with the shower will not be compliant with the code language. So. <clears throat> so as a point of disclosure, I am uh, an employee of Reese Associates, so I will not, I will be recusing myself during this. Um, the, um, in the past, for the past 10 years, since we are a particular board that deals with specialties in terms of each of our positions, we have uh, not uh, recused ourselves from participating in discussions or asking questions. So I intend to uh, maintain the precedent that's been set for the last 10 years. And uh, I might ask a question or two during the uh, course of this. So, um, is there a representative from the applicant's party? Would you approach the podium and state your name and address for the record, please? Melanie Compton, I am with Reese Associates, 9211 Lake Hefner Parkway, Suite 300, Oklahoma City, zip 73120. I almost gave you my home address. In. <laughs> Would you mind telling us a little bit about your case, please? Yes. Um, would you mind if I made some introductions of who is also joining me here today? Certainly. That will be okay. Um, and just a little bit more about myself. I am a vice president of Reese. Um, I have been specializing in healthcare design for the last 30 years at Reese Associates. Also with me today is Stephen Lawson. He is the principal in charge and architect of record. Representing Mercy Hospital, Oklahoma City, is Kate Blake. 
Director of Strategic Operatives. She is the operational project lead for the Love <coughs> Family Women's Center. And then we also have Jessica Bratcher. She is the regional coordinator of the Safe Patient Handling and Mobility. First of all, thank you for taking your time today and for this opportunity that allows us to share a little bit more information about um, this task at hand. Um, we are seeking a variance for the patient room showers at the Mercy Hospital, Oklahoma City campus, and it is referred to as the Love Family Women's Center. We would like to highlight today a few things that kind of build upon the information that you have reviewed in your packet and, um, and demonstrate that we believe we not only meet the intent of the code, but we feel like we exceed it. Just for some clarification, um, the, the ICC code is referencing people that have, you know, physical deficiencies. The, uh, the showers that we're talking about are on in our patient units, so the inpatients. So that kind of moves into a different ca category than just your general public into more of a patient who is under supervised care of a licensed medical facility. So the in the matter of the shower design, um, we would like to walk you through Mercy's safe patient handling and mobility assessment process and steps, just really quickly to give you an idea of the process that they have in place, which they feel like it even extends beyond what the requirements of ICC require and even make it a better situation for not only patients but staff as well. So if you wouldn't mind, Jessica Bratcher is going to join us and again she is the coordinator for the Safe Patient Handling and Mobility. Oh, good afternoon. Oh, sorry. Jessica Bratcher, um, 4300 West Memorial Road, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73120. So we have a process in place and have for years um, that is a mobility assessment that is performed by the nurse taking care of that patient. Upon admission and any changes, if a patient falls or anything that happens, they have to reassess that patient through these steps. We have six different steps. I do have copies if you guys wanted to see this. Um, this is our clinical practice bulletin, but all nursing is taught on this and it is basically a guideline for them to help them be safe so the patient doesn't fall, get injured, or the coworker doesn't get injured. Because that's my main uh, focus in my position is to prevent patient and coworker injury um, by handling the patients. So we have a step one, which um, has these um, progression. So if the patient can respond to verbal stimulus, follow simple commands, all of the things, if they cannot, then they are they need to be using a piece of equipment on those patients. And the Love Family Women's Center was graciously enough, they purchased tons of equipment, so they have everything they need um, to progress these patients and um, <clears throat> utilize via the mobility assessment. So then we have a step two, so if they can't um, sit with men assist at least two minutes um, or fully extend the leg against gravity three to five seconds, then they need to utilize a lift, um, which we have readily available for those coworkers. Um, then if you need to go keep going on, we have a level three, which sits and stands one to two times with men assist. If they cannot, then they need to use a, a sit to stand piece of equipment, um, which is readily available. They have, they have 16 pieces of equipment throughout this hospital. Um, and then going on, you go to step four and then five, and then if they can ambulate independently, then there's that. But Mercy's um, best and safe practice um, for this process is to, I know that they were wanting to put a shower, a full down shower chair in the shower, but that's not our safe practice um, because then we would have to mobilize that patient in a wet environment. And so moving, having a wheeled shower chair transferring them in a clean, dry area in the room and then rolling them into the shower and bathing them is the best practice and then dry, drying the floor, taking them back to the bed, using a lift per their mobility assessment that I just discussed. Any questions? So <clears throat> your patients 
then are assessed to whether they are ambulatory essentially or not. And with different, differing degrees of uh, mobility, mm -hmm. you have differing degrees of assistance that you provide. 100%, yes. Okay, so I heard yes. you correctly. They Thank you. do the mobility assessment no matter, because the patient can change within a matter of seconds, so they need to be doing, they, it's required documentation to their EHR, their electronic health record, so it's documented in their electronic health record, and it has to be documented. It's required documentation. So is there a reason why the fold-down chair would be um, in the way or anything, or is it just you don't want it to be in there for people to accidentally use? I, oh, sorry. I think that it would be a barrier. Um, it would be in the way, especially if the patient, which we don't want, would fall in the shower. That would be another barrier we would have to work around to get that patient safely out of the restroom. When you're uh, bringing a patient into the shower, mm -hmm. and I know that you have wheels that lock that down. Yes. Does the patient have the option to stand up, or the, are they always in the sitting position? Uh, they are, per their mobility status, it depends, like, you know, if they're going to be utilizing an ADA room, I'm assuming they're going to need that assistance in the shower with, per nursing staff, um, so they, we would leave them seated. So the, the, the mobile device is actually locked down, it can't move. The shower chair? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So if you call that shower chair a mobile shower seat, uh -huh. then it becomes a shower seat. Now I'm asking you this, would yes. it become a shower seat to where they could sit? If they had to, if they wanted to stand up, they could stand up, but they would always have the shower seat there to provide the same uh, accessibility as a pull down shower seat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's just mobile, and so it's not in the way. It's yeah. not stuck, so we can move it where we need to move it. Okay. Are the shower controls in the same place? If there was a shower seat there, that's the only thing we're really concerned about here is the shower seat, the controls and the valves, everything is in the same position, the same required uh, height distance. Yes, on the document that is pulled up on the screen, the diagram A is pulled straight out of the ICC, and you can see that there is what we call a wing wall, but it's referenced as a seat wall, and that supports that fold-down shower chair seat. If you can go to our diagram B, this is the layout that is constructed in place, and you can see we eliminated that wing wall that supports that fold-down seat, and we want to roll the mobile shower chair directly in control. that exact spot and the controls are located in the correct spot as well between diagram A and diagram B. As with the handicap bars and such? And handicap, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. I think one thing that might help for people to understand that's not a part of this industry, if you will, is maybe to, I don't know if you all answer this or if this woman would, but when you have a patient come in, you have to do an initial assessment of that patient, correct? Because when you start talking about these different steps and levels and all of that that you've identified, then um, it's very important to understand how much assistance they're gonna need and all that. And you predetermine that. Now, it doesn't mean it can't change because it may change, and especially if people, if their health doesn't improve and it gets worse, then you may have to go to a different level and all that. I, I, am I kind of leading that yep, correctly? that's correct. Right, yeah, because I own an assisted yes. living, and so I understand oh, yeah. all these different processes, and I'm not a big fan of fold-down shower seats, especially if you have very large people. They scare yes. me, and mm -hmm. I like solid things and, uh, and that is the risk they want to control yeah. right by their fault. yeah yeah the, nursing the, drives it the whole key is to is to try to prevent falls exactly. falls 100%. Are, when injuries occur and depending on the age falls can result in uh early death for lack of a better phrase yes and uh 
currently, you know, before the Women's Center, our nurses were following that criteria of the mobility assessment and the mobile shower chairs when right. needed. And I want to knock on all of the wood in this room, but we have not had a fall on that unit in a long, long yeah, time. That's good. So if that helps, yeah, too. Well, you've got some longevity and experience and all that. That's so important because, mm -hmm. you know, I've had my facility yeah. for 20 years and then people get into it real new. And they just don't understand the importance of some of the uh, assistance issues. Yeah. And so, but, I, but it sounds to me like you're covering all those. Now also, I won't, you all deal with CMS, correct? Yes. Uh, JCO, yes. Oklahoma State Department of yeah. Health, yeah. all of these different state to federal agencies that now this is nothing against my city, Oklahoma City, born and bred, grew up downtown. I know, you know, I, I love the city, but I'm just saying sometimes uh, there, are, there are other places that override that, other organizations, I don't know what you call them, agencies, if you will, that would override that. And so I'm sure you've researched and been through all of that because they all of these that I'm mentioning they do annual audits at least and uh -huh. maybe the Medicare Medicaid CMS they probably do it more often I'm not a nursing home so I don't we we're private pay but um, but I know the Oklahoma State Department of Health you know they'll they like to be on the war path yeah. and I'll go on record to say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> another thing guys um, on the equipment that I was discussing all staff has to be checked off initially before they get a new device. They have to have that hands-on interaction with the equipment and we do it annually on top of that. So they're constantly being trained on this equipment. Right, that's great, that's great. You got a lot of Very cool important. devices. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, so anybody wants to have a baby? Sorry. <laughs> when you're uh, in this mobility device, mm -hmm. it's pushed into the shower, it's stabilized to where it can't move. The shower takes place. Now. An, an attendant comes and removes that person from that area. They never get up and walk away from that, right? That is correct. Yes, okay. yeah, and we're, no. And so, and if they're in an ADA room, mm -hmm. our staff is gonna stay with that patient, is going to stay with that patient because they are gonna need more care than like, say if I were, you know, had a baby. You know, I'm more independent, but they are not. Um, so the staff would have to stay with them. Okay. And that's if they're using the bathroom, shower, any of that, they would not leave them alone. And clarify too, if we can, I'm not trying to dominate this. I just think <laughs> there's okay. some things that need, everybody needs to understand if you're not familiar with all this. Um, even, though, even though Mercy checks off each employee, each nurse aide, nurses, whoever it is that's assisting resident, uh, I call them residents, but I mean patients. Yeah. Uh, you're still going to get surveyed and all that, and those agencies are going to make sure they're they can, they can ask for employee files and they can they can stay there it's for documented. a couple of weeks and drive you crazy mm -hmm. and get records. And uh, so your ducks all have to be in a row because the last yes. thing you want is an IJ and be shut down. Yep. And yep. so it's uh, and when it's, it's joint very important. Sorry. When Joint Commission comes in, they do ask for certain education. They'll pull random files, sure. somebody that's been there 30 years, somebody that's a new hire, a volunteer, you know, random files. Um, so we make sure it's all documented uh, via our like, LMS learning management system. Um, mm -hmm. I actually do all that documentation. <laughs> um, so it is documented. So if Joint Commission walked in tomorrow, they're like, hey, did this person complete this education? I would just get on our electronic learning management system, pull their transcript, and here you go. Right. But they have to be documented, and I run reports to make sure that they're doing, making sure that they are done as well, in addition. Incident reports, all of those things are just vital. To, yes, 100%. Well, to Agreed. not only protect the patient, but to protect the hospital or mm -hmm. the community. You know, yeah. I would like to mention, this facility is not just a one-off facility. Um, Mercy Health Systems developed women's guidelines. And this facility is actually the fifth new women's center over the last 12 years that have 
these exact designs. Mm -hmm. right. um, so it's, it's proven that you know, it, it's a process throughout the ministry mm -hmm. and it's not just a localized you know, case. Yes. Right. Yeah, so, help, so help me understand, um, has the Joint Commission already reviewed this and, and uh, I guess accredited your facility based on this design? Is that, am I hearing that right? Hello, everyone. My name is Kate Blake, 4300 West Memorial Road, Oklahoma City, 73120. Again, operational project lead for Mercy Hospital. Um, so this hospital um, and all of the facilities that Melanie is speaking about, so those five women's centers that we have built across Mercy, have all gone through Joint Commission accreditation. So Joint Commission is our healthcare accrediting body um, for our hospital, so that is the accrediting body, so the authority having jurisdiction over our healthcare regulations. And so all of our hospitals, so those five women's centers that Melanie is mentioning, have all gone through those surveys for those hospitals multiple, mul yeah. <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. Multiple, multiple. Um, and they do meet the specifications for our authority having jurisdiction. Um, they do require us to meet ADA guidelines, and so that is what the guidelines that we're meeting here um, do recommend, and um, that is what they are requiring us to meet, is the ADA guidelines um, for that authority having jurisdiction. OSDH has come and surveyed um, our hospital. We've become very, very good friends with our healthcare um, <laughs> friend at OSDH and done many walks with him, and we do have our licensure. We are seeing patients just not in those ADA rooms right now because of this, and so we're just not able to serve that patient population right now because of that. Um, so CMS um, is obviously the overarching uh, authority having jurisdiction when it comes to healthcare, but Joint Commission Resources is who we use to meet that CMS guidelines. So that really is who we need to answer to when it comes to healthcare authorities having jurisdiction. We do meet all of those things. Um, it's just this that we're lacking okay. right now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so Scott, the reason that it was um, so originally the building permit was filed and everything on it was approved. I'm just saying, I'm trying to understand it. And then it came out to the, I'm assuming the final inspection or one of the inspections, and that's when it came up that this was not in accordance with what uh, the code was saying. Correct, I believe it was our uh, plumbing inspections team that discovered the missing seats. And that's what brought it to our attention for their, uh, I believe they're trying to get their final at the moment. So. But the original plans didn't ever show us a, a, a shower seat in there when it was approved that way. I'm not trying to point fingers or anything. I'm just trying to get it all in my head. Yeah, I don't recall if it was on there or not, to be honest. I've no slept since I looked at it last. <laughs> uh, would you, would you say that in some defense, though, the, the shower seat that is shown, the therapeutic shower seat, might have been misconstrued as, as the seat that the oh. city reviewed. Okay. Now, what are those, can you explain those shower seats for us, the therapeutic seats? I'd be happy to explain what we're operationally using those therapeutic shower seats for. So in the shower, so um, which version am I looking at? I'm looking at diagram B here. You'll be able to see uh, the arrow that's pointing to the therapeutic massage um, bench with the water jets so that's a little bit further back from where you see kind of the shower controls that therapeutic massage jet is really for mama having her baby um, so moms sometimes have back labor and so really that is meant to be a ther therapeutic massage so that mom can have a rest and labor in the shower if she passes the mobility assessment if she is healthy enough to be able to do that we do have to meet have her meet clinical guidelines to be able to do that um, with the nursing staff and then if she is healthy enough she can labor in that shower until she goes into actually pushing the baby out um, to get some relief from that back labor and that is what that is operationally designed to do for us okay thank you so um, for the record, I do believe the seat was missed. Okay. So looking at that, then they're say, they looked at it as being, their interpretation was if it isn't exactly like this and it's not, it's not acceptable. Um, in our uh, codes, I know there's 
<clears throat> there's language that says if there's something that exceeds it is, or, an, or equal or exceeds it, then, then it, could be, uh, it could be approved. And I'm assuming that's why you're here saying, you guys are saying this not only meets it, in your opinion, it exceeds what the, what the code says. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're arguing alternate means and methods and materials. Right. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to remind the board as well, we do have Scott Ellis here as our accessibility consultant if you need to ask him any questions as well. I would like to uh, hear what Scott has to say, but I would also like to say on behalf of our city that um, just because I served, I've served on the, long, the governor's long-term care facility advisory board, it's got a long name, for 14 years, and so we, we learned a lot about that, but all of these plans and everything had to get approved through uh, the architectural part of the state uh, Department of Health. And it seems to me, Scott, that the city is relieved of any liability because of these, they're not superior agency, the agencies that have authority over that and, uh, and so I feel like that we're protected from not, uh, if this is approved, from placing any kind of liability if there ever was an injury or anything on the city. And that I feel like that's my responsibility to sit on this board is to protect our city from liability issues. But I'd also like to hear what Scott has to say would you state your name and address, please, Scott? My name is Scott Ellis. I am here on behalf of the Oklahoma City Mayor's Committee on Disability Concerns, um, 6108 Northwest 63rd Street, Oklahoma City, 73132. Uh, before I make a comment, I'd like to preface that I uh, work for the Paralyzed Veterans of America. I've been there over 20 years and I'm highly knowledgeable about people with disabilities and their needs. Uh, I am not an expert in the least bit on ANSI codes. I deal more with ADA issues. Um, what I could say about this case, having been around and assisted severely disabled people in the shower and other locations that the space that you have to move in that area, especially depending on the size of that person you're assisting, the more room you have, the better it is. Because it can get cramped even in a five foot area uh, when you have one or, or sometimes two people, depending on the person's needs, take, you know, trying to give them a shower or uh, take care of them. And I, in my opinion, having a bench mounted to the wall while people are trying to move around somebody with a disability uh, would only impede that person's ability to take care of that individual. Um, if you're moving around and you run into that and slip, you know, you could fall onto that person that's already there for recovery uh, for whatever issues they're having. So. I'm sorry I can't offer you anything on the ANSI code itself, just my professional opinion on care of uh, people with disabilities and, and my opinion that I think that bench mounted to the wall would impede um, quality care to that uh, person that needs the care. Anybody have any questions for me? Scott, what do you think the difference would be because um we use a lot of shower seats, and they're put in one spot. They're not moved around. I mean, our, our showers are not designed like a barber shop where you get your hair cut and spin <laughs> all the way around. But um, it's kind of, in my mind, I'm thinking that would be the same thing as a stationary bench like on the sketches here. And uh, what, do, what do you think about that? Because if the bench wasn't there, then, uh, the chair would be put in place. The, ha the chair it. could be removed, but on the other hand, if they do their assessment properly, then they're not going to be putting somebody in a room that has uh, a bench like that because you know that's where we've got to trust their professionalism as caregivers. 
Well, I, I know from, again, being in the shower with people that um, having a portable, movable uh, shower chair like they proposed is by far superior to having a fixed area where you have to transfer somebody into that seat on a wet floor, try and, and clean them the best of your ability, because right. there's areas that are very difficult to clean when somebody's sitting down and you don't have the ability to move them around. Yes. You know, without risk of being on a bench of falling off the bench. Or, right. You know, so in my opinion, what they're doing is, is the right thing, and uh, having that on the wall would just, you know, impede quality care more than it would benefit. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying too, and I also, you know, the, the levels they were talking about, because you, you and I both know that certain people are going to need lifts and different things like that to even begin to give them a decent bathing experience, if you will. Yes. And so, yeah, that's good. All right, thank you. Thank you. I do have a picture of the specially designed shower chair. You can see that how that could help mm -hmm. in that showering process. And I'm I'm here for any additional questions or, or comments. Do we have any more questions for the applicant? Pat? Okay. Mm. Do we have anything that we would want to hear from Mike Wilson? I'm always about the fire marshal. <laughs> I don't think that. I know you notice he sat on the back row almost, and usually sitting right up here by Scott. I I do have to admit, um, I would be interested in hearing just Mike's opinion about the difference. This is an I two occupancy, correct? I two. Uh, the yeah. difference between I two and other occupancies, and how the code might. Uh, whether it makes exceptions for the um, uh, eye occupancies over others and maybe what those things are. <clears throat> Mike Wilson with the Fire Marshal's Office. Um, also here on capacity that I've been the clerk of this board before for about 20 years. Um, and the history that the board has gone through. In the past, we've they have actually approved uh, in previous editions have approved possibility of a portable chair that can be moved to different rooms when they're needed to be this the, the what I'm hearing anyway is is a much better uh, alternative and, and everyone knows that the I2 facilities are better monitored than any other type um, I'm not going to say they're always excellent but because I've been in some that aren't excellent but uh, we, we allow on the fire side, we allow more secure hardware in some places. You're allowed uh, to not actually not have uh, notification devices in patient rooms because typically they're not able to do anything by themselves anyway. You know, they're bedridden or whatever. So the alarm goes off at the nurse's station in the common areas, So and the nurse's station is part of their uh, operations or manual have duties to do to make sure their area is clear and make sure everybody is taken care of. Um, in this case, I, I just in my own opinion, my wife's had three hip surgeries and she's been in a wheelchair a number of times. Uh, and the, the, uh, the, the small inside the shower transfer is really not that good for a wheelchair bound person. Um, it really isn't because it, it's not in the right location where the, the seat of the chair is. And uh, so a roll-in shower is much better, has always been much better. Um, used to, we had a lot of problems with people when we would require a roll-in shower. They would only want to provide a little three by three, you know, shower with a bench in it uh, and not a large area that you could get the whole, sh the whole wheelchair in the shower. So anyway, in, there is uh, obviously justification that there is a lot more uh, monitoring of these facilities. 
because it's an I-2 use, uh, obviously it's not a fire issue. Uh, so on the, as far as the fire department goes, we don't have, it, uh, I would say, any uh, recommendation one way or the other. Uh, it's up, up to the board to decide if this is equivalent or uh, better or uh, just another alternative to what the code requires and, and should be acceptable or not. I think I would like to make a motion to approve the variance uh, as requested, um, let's see, to use the preferred plans. Would that be correctly stated? The, I think there Is were a the couple preferred, uh, the third floor preferred plan or the, I think that was the one that can you bring that? Is that one up there? Are you, you're looking for a variance for both preferred plans or one? Yes, sir. Both both preferred plans. Okay, so one and three. Okay. Second and third. Yes. Correct. Yes. So okay. if you want to um, go to the next, and then one more. There you go. Yeah. So there you see the ICC diagram above, and then you see our layout constructed in place, and it is the same scenario of rolling a shower chair into that position, and the shower controls, again, are <coughs> currently located Thank in you. the correct position. I will second uh, Tommy's uh, motion to approve both, both plans. Yeah. Do you want to take a vote? Approved. Kyle Lombardo is recused. Abstained. Austin Barton is absent. Uh, Jim McMurdo? Yes. Ron Rofi? Yes. Tommy Willis? Yes. And Patrice Zimmerman? Yes. All right, the vote passes. Congratulations, your variance is granted. Thank you all. Thank you. So the next order of business. Is any continued cases, and I see we have none. Is, that's correct, Scott. Mm -hmm. Correct. <clears throat> and then um, the last bit of business, uh, item eight, is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. 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 I'm good Who was the second? Uh, Pat. Oh, Pat was the second. <laughs> Thank <clears throat> you.